Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Martin Conway from Contamac here in the UK. I'm very sorry we couldn't be with you in person this year for obvious reasons, um, but we're pleased to be able to make this small contribution to your meeting. Um, without further ado, let me get out of the way and just drag myself up to the corner and we'll get on with the uh, presentation. What I'd like to talk to you about today is a phenomenon that is common to most practitioners who fit scleral lenses. It's called midday fogging. And this is what it looks like under, under OCT. We can see that the scleral lens um, and the cornea there, between them the tear reservoir has gone milky and foggy. And this is <clears throat> giving blurry vision, a hazy vision to the patient. And it's been a phenomenon that's dogged the fitting of scleral lenses ever since they became popular um, 10 to 15 years ago. It affects about 30% of wearers, and it's not specifically associated with any indications for use, age, ethnicity, or patient um, uh, or lens design. Um, it's not attached to any cleaning or disinfection regimen either. However, new evidence um, coming out shortly from the University of Houston, Maria Walker, she'll be publishing it shortly, will indicate that lipids are the main culprit, lipids specifically from the meibomian glands. So um, what I'd like to do is share you with some of the experience that we've found in the practice that I work at and what we've done to reduce the incidence of fogging significantly. So what we're saying now is that midday fogging can be reduced or e minimized or even eliminated in certain cases. I'd like to show you this one, first of all. This is a fairly old slide. It's um, from something, uh, some, a piece of research we did some or oh, 10 years ago uh, now in the Pacific University. And it shows a lens at the top slide is a lens being put on eye in the morning and the same lens on that same eye um, eight hours later. And you can see that the tear film has become clogged, vision would necessarily have become blurred for that patient. Now this patient is what was known as a persistent fogger. It occurred in both eyes and we played around putting lenses in both eyes to try to cure it. And we found that despite attempts with other lenses, we could actually eliminate fogging um, in this patient by uh, changing lens design. And that set me on my course um, to, uh, of looking into this uh, phenomenon. First step really is um, to realize that the majority of sclerals these days are fitted to keratoconics. And a high proportion of those keratoconics will have some form of dry eye indication or meibomian gland uh, dysfunction. And rather than thinking of sclerals of a method of actually solving that, then it's important that we try to treat that condition and clear up any lid issues prior to attempting to fit the lenses. That's step one. The thing with fitting scleral lenses is that it's fairly easy for a novice fitter to achieve good results. And so for those of you that haven't yet started to use um, scleral lenses on your patients, I would encourage you to do so. Because even without experience, you can get a good result in terms of good comfort, good visual performance without endangering the patient's uh, ocular health. And it's been estimated that you have to fit about 30 to 35 patients before you actually gain that competence. However, if you are working from a, um, a fitting set, which most of us will be, um, I've been speaking to laboratories that those hospitals and clinics that are actually using spherical fitting sets will actually only use a toric periphery in less than 10% of the lenses that they order. Okay, so step two, we've fitted the patient, they've collected their lenses, they've left, and we've uh, arranged for the first, first uh, follow-up visit. What we now do, as they come in wearing the lens, and we insist on them coming through mid-morning or later, so that the lens has been on eye and in place for at least two to three hours. So the lens is settled, and what we should have underneath that lens is a sealed tear reservoir, sealed system. What we then do is put fluorescein into the eye 
with the lens in place. And we see here a typical what we would actually see where there's a little bit of fluorescent finding its way under the very edge of the lens, but no serious seepage underneath the lens itself. However, in some cases, we notice this sort of thing where we're starting to see fluorescein creep in under the lens further than the lens edge through the vault area and actually into the main body, the main optic zone of the lens underneath the um, in, in, front, in, in front of the line of sight. And if we look um, uh, later, if we allow five minutes and watch the patient blink, we can see that that flare now is developing. There's a significant amount of um, fluorescein being pumped under the lens in the tear fluid um, with, the, with the blink action alone, with the lens rocking on this toroidal surface. We're getting lens ex tear exchange under the lens at this point, which shouldn't be happening. We should have a sealed system there. And if we look immediately opposite that, we'll see a similar thing going on on the other side of the lens at five o'clock, indicating that what we have here is a toric surface um, with a spherical lens sitting on it. If we wait still further, we'll see that these two flares will actually meet up. And so it's quite possible that if this tear film was contaminated, if it was heavily laden with lipids, this would become an issue within this patient's eye. Sometimes the, um, the leak is less obvious. Here we have a happy patient, otherwise happy, is comfortable, um, no, no um, uh, visual um, problems or comfort problems, wearing the lenses all day but having to remove the lens midday, every day to clean and rinse. And so we can see that the lens lifts slightly on the edge here at, uh, in, at the, in the mid, in the mid uh, zone. Um, but if we instill fluorescein into this, we can see that fluorescein is penetrating, un, penetrating under the edge of the lens and actually getting into that area under the vault of the lens. Again, if we wait, we will see that it starts to penetrate further. And if we wait still further, we can now see that the flow is disappearing upwards um, around the lens with every blink uh, the patient takes. We waited still further, and this is what we found. In time, this, um, the fluorescein has seeped into the lens and you can see the amount of flow around the um, tear reservoir. And again, this patient had oily lipid tears, and this is what would cause the fogging. What we think happens is that these lipids dissolved in the tears under the action of the pump action of the lids pressing down on the lens with each blink actually puts these um, uh, lipids into a kind of emulsion droplets, which cause the fogging and the disruption to vision. Let's go back to that image I showed you earlier. Um, this is our patient, our persistent fogger. Um, as you can see, lens one, this is the first lens we had on in the morning at the top there, and what happened at eight hours with our heavy fogged um, uh, tear reservoir. If we then look at a different lens that we fitted this patient with, with a tighter periphery, we can see now that the, uh, again, clear in the morning on insertion on the top layer there, but beneath it, we can now see that the, uh, the tear, tear uh, fluid is much clearer and we've cleared, almost eliminated all of the fogging. So it just shows you that with careful fitting, we can reduce this phenomenon. In summary, uh, treat lead issues before you fit the patients. Don't look at the scleral lens as a remedy for these issues get them sorted out before we start fitting. So we're actually putting lenses onto as clean and clear a tear fluid as possible. In severe cases, we actually use, uh, say, advise the patients to use a saline eye wash prior to putting their lenses. If they're waking up in the morning with the, with the tears all clogged from overnight um, lid closure, then we get them to use an eye bath with some um, uh, uh, fresh saline and wash the eye out considerably before they put the lens in. This helps significantly. Always use fluorescein at aftercare before you remove the lens to assess what's happening to the edges. And you only need to amend the fit if there are complications or problems. 
even if you notice quite a severe edge lift, if the patient is wearing that lens quite happily in comfort without any um, uh, vision or comfort issues, then we will just leave it alone. And then use toric peripheries to improve edge alignment if needed. Your laboratory um, um, bio, bio lens can advise you on that on how to achieve it and you talk to them about any amendments that you uh, wish to make. In our practice now, we supply over 70% of lenses to patients. They will have toric peripheries or some other form of edge modification. And our incidence of fogging has dropped to less than 5%. With this is a very brief um, presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in person next year. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.